So, yeah, thank you for joining me on this Thursday evening uh, or afternoon, depending where you are. Uh, my name is Isaac Dury, and this is the 101 webinar. Nat usually runs these, so this is my first foray into this, so take it easy on me. But if you do have any questions or, or anything like that, please um, let me know uh, via the chat or just pipe up. Um, you have your microphones available to you and all those sorts of things as well. So what we're going to cover today is an overview of what Tidy HQ can do for your organisation. Um, or some of the main features, I suppose, that we dive into to sort of get things set up properly for you. Um, gathering your community, so contacts, how the CRM works, and also administrators, how to invite the team in and utilise roles appropriately. Getting ready to go public, so how do you set up the web page and the memberships so that they look and work as expected for everyone and saving some time for the committee so we'll start to dig into meetings and tasks um, so we know how to to get that up and running from a governance succession planning point of view and then we'll touch on finances and shop um, towards the end like i said any questions just uh let me know and i'll try and keep an eye on it all so like I've said, uh, any questions, comments, throw it in the chat, leave your microphone on mute um, so everyone's able to hear, uh, but feel free to, to jump off mute if, if you want. Like I said, I'll, I'm recording this, so if you are watching on YouTube, welcome. Um, but I'll switch between this presentation and the demonstration account so you, we can sort of switch between them all. So first things first, Tidy is all about the contacts, so the CRM side of the platform. So everybody starts as a contact in Tidy's world. Um, from uh, being a contact, they can then graduate to being an administrator, have assigned a role. Maybe they um, become a member through purchasing the membership. Maybe they buy an event ticket. Um, they interact with you on all sorts of ways, but they all have to start as a contact. So you need to import them. Uh, via a CSV uh, import, which is really straightforward, um, or you can have them register via your membership page or events page or, or what have you, and they'll automatically um, get generated as a contact in your database. So each admin should have a role so you can keep a track of things. I'll, I'll dig into that in a, in a moment. Roles are very powerful things for Tidy HQ. Roles are things like president, secretary, treasurer, whatever the roles are in your organisation, you can set those up and they, they effectively become your succession plan. So uh, if Isaac was the president um, and Nat um, at the next AGM is nominated, takes over Isaac as president, all it is is a matter of changing that role and all the tasks and everything will be automatically assigned to that new president. Really powerful. Um, so, yeah, members are just a result of a contact purchasing a membership. So um, they all start out as contacts and they I think of it as a token that a contact is holding in their hand. So as, as long as they've got a valid membership token, you could call them a member. Um, but if that token expires um, or you cancel it or what have you, then they're no longer a member, but they still need to be part of your contacts database. So they still are a contact with you. So like I've uh, already touched on, before you can make someone an administrator, they need to be in Tidy HQ as a contact. Um, and you can decide which features of the platform they can access from there. Um, it is all or nothing access with the permission sets for each feature. So if they see the, the finances area, for example, they see all of the finances. We don't have more finite um, administrative permissions just yet. So just to give you an example of that, I'm going to log in. So to log in, you go to your Tidy HQ address here, which is something like this um, that's more obviously uh, relevant for you. You log in over here on the right-hand side. Once you've logged in, you can switch to the admin dashboard. If you're a member of multiple organisations, you can switch organisation here. Um, but all we want to do is go to the administrative side of the, the platform here. Um, 
just uh, we'll dive into contacts. So to create a new contact, get new contact, uh, we can set this person up. Isaac Dury, that's basically all you need to set up a contact. Obviously, you can add as many other details in here as you want. You can also have as, as many custom fields in here as you want. So you might want to capture what school they came from or what hobbies are interested in. Maybe it's working with children check details. Maybe it's first aid certification um, details, things like that. You can capture all that in custom fields. Custom fields are set under organisation settings, which I'll show you in a moment. Once we've set up a contact, you might want to group them. Um, there's two ways to group your contacts. Um, one is to set up a group. So we might call this, uh, calling it all the Isaacs, for example. Um, this is a very limited group. You can save that. Obviously, you can add your logo or, or anything else like that. We can now add someone in here for Isaac. There he is. So we can add him. Another really powerful feature is called smart groups. Um, a smart group is based on, so everyone starting with I is based on filters. So for example, I wanna say everyone that has the first name that starts with the letter I, we can drop that in here and save that. And this group will automatically um, start populating people that start with the letter I in here. And as someone gets added or subtracted uh, that fulfills that criteria, um, they'll be added or subtracted to that group accordingly. So that's super, super powerful. Um, for, for doing all sorts of things. Obviously, that relates a lot to communication. So just quickly, to communicate, we have email and SMS. Um, group messaging is a more powerful thing, which I tend not to um, steer people towards. It's a bit like a reply all group. Um, so people can have a conversation from their inbox it's only really um, for the committee or some real select tight group like that um, because if you have 50 members in a group and they can all reply all, it gets very, very noisy and very spammy very quickly. So typically we don't use group messaging too often. New email is just like you're, you're probably very familiar with. Um, so we can pick a group, for example, um, everyone's starting with I. It's now got that contact populated. Hi, eyes. We have these merge tags down the bottom here. So you can personalize it. So we can say, hey there, Isaac. Um, um, and you can drop in images and, and all sorts of things in here and make a pretty decent looking uh, newsletter for yourself. We can update the logo under organization settings, which we'll go through in a moment. And you can also add attachments in here. SMS works exactly the same. Um, you pick your group. So pick this starting with I. You do need SMS uh, credit in order to send SMS. SMS credit varies, um, or the cost of an SMS rather, varies depending on um, the country that you're in. Uh, in Australia, it's just under 0 0.07 cents per, per SMS, which is 160 characters. And you, then you just type in your message. We will do some estimation based on how many characters it is and all those sorts of things um, so you can understand how much it's going to cost the organisation before sending off. SMS, I think, is an underutilised service for most organisations, and it's something that you can really um, utilise for something that's really sort of time critical, especially such as this event's been rained out, don't bother coming or, hey, we've moved from this building to that building or, or things of that nature. So that's how to add a contact, add a group and then communicate with them. Uh, I'll then go into administrators and roles just quickly so we can see there's only Nat in here at the moment but we can invite another admin. So we can invite Isaac because we've just added him as a contact because obviously everything starts 
with a contact in here. Uh, actually, he needs an email address. So forget that. So we can drop in his email address. I look at tidy HQ. We'll give them full permissions. So this is what the, the slide was telling us that if I give full permissions in finances, I will be able to see all aspects of the finances. So what's and all. Um, and the same applies with any of these areas. So just something to keep in mind um, when you're adding someone with full access to the whole thing. Once I invite that person, um, they'll be uh, added to my system as well. So that's how we invite um, an administrator. Uh, while I've got you here, I'll go through organisation settings just quickly. So uh, real quick, we've got custom fields. So this is where we can add in things like um, first aid certificate if you're wanting to collect that sort of information in here. Um, do you have a first aid? So this is um, questions for the member or for the customer um, that they see. It might be a text field, a checkbox, a group of checkboxes. So it could be just a, a yes, no checkbox. Um, it could be a date field that you want them to. So it could be the date, the first aid certificate um, expires, or it could be a file upload as well. Then you've got these visibility too. So if you only want it visible to the administrators, it's only an admin facing um, field. You can have it admin only. You can have it to public. So this is allowing the Joe public to edit this field themselves. Then you've got a read only field. So this could be something like uh, what year did, did you join the organisation? Maybe that's something that you want them to, to edit at any stage that maybe it's something that you only want them to see. And if they really want to edit it, they have to get in touch with you to do so. So custom fields are super flexible that you can have through the system. Activity feed at the top here is a big audit trail of everything that's happened through the organisation. Again, really powerful, especially if something hits the fan. Um, it allows you to keep an eye on it all and um, uh, understand what's been happening. Contacts, so you can have a or generate a contact ID number. So some people use this as their membership number um, for their organisation. Um, totally optional. Uh, you can choose to use it or not. And it's just sequential. So every new person, regardless of whether they're a member or not, anyone that comes through will be given a new contact ID number um, that's associated with that person. Date time currency is fairly self-explanatory. The big one here is the financial calendar starts first of, and you can change this to whatever month you want. I know a lot of uh, organisations um, have different financial calendars, so you can adjust that there. Speaking of finances, um, uh, I'll go back to that one, Fiona. Just give me a moment. Uh, finance settings, uh, tax, so GST. Um, you don't have to have GST on everything. Invoices, expenses and deposits. So organisation number. I often put ABN number in here for your invoices and things like that. If you've got a number prefix, so it could be um, something like that. So any invoice that comes out of here, you know, was generated from Tidy HQ, just to make things really simple, especially if you're using multiple accounting systems, perhaps. Um, footer information, you could drop in here things like um, don't chase us for a refund or something about your refund policy. Payment information could be something like BSB and account number details uh, if you're in Australia. And finally, finance categories. So you can have as many finance categories as you want. Um, you can set up new categories as you need. Uh, with it, you can include tax or have it on top of as a default um, thing. Um, and then you can, if you make too many, you can merge them back in and, and all those sorts of things. Organisation details, uh, most of these are fairly self-explanatory. Logos and colours, so this is where I can change this logo that goes out on that email and is seen all over the place in here. Account owner, so this is only seen by the account owner. Um, uh, 
where you can change the account owner. I know there's a few groups from Curtin here tonight. Um, this is Curtin University for, for yourselves. Um, so you won't be able to see this, this area. Payment settings. This is really, really important uh, that you have Stripe, um, especially set up if you want to take online payments. It's a free system to set up. Um, you just hit connect with Stripe and or create an account if you don't have a Stripe account just yet. And um, that's how we accept payments through the platform for you. And web page settings I'll get into in just a moment. So the question from Fiona was merge tags. So merge tags are just found down the bottom here. Um, first name, last name, contact ID. So that's that membership number if, if you want to use that. Full name, uh, if that's something that you want to use. Email address, nickname, occupation, organisation name. They're the merge tags that we currently have um, available for you at the moment. Um, where did we get to? Gathering your community, contacts and admins. So like I said, each admin should then be assigned to a role. So uh, I've just shown you how to add an administrator with different permissions. Um, the next part is to make sure that that administrator has a role within the organisation. So this is, like I've mentioned, really, really powerful for succession planning. Um, because you can assign tasks to not just an individual, but to a role. Um, and as that role turns over, um, all those tasks are assigned with the role, not the individual. So you have that succession plan, um, which is really, really um, like the note here, roles make handover a breeze for the organisation. So I'll just go and show you how to do that now. On the left-hand side, admins and roles again. I've got this roles tab here. So we've got president, treasurer. We can set up a new role in here. So maybe that's the uh, secretary. Uh, responsibilities, you can copy and paste. There's a large number of um, role templates out there um, from state governments or your peak bodies, et cetera, as to what they feel a, a secretary should do in an organisation. I quite often copy and paste that and then tweak it to suit my organisation and what we're doing. Presumably the secretary might be um, recording meeting minutes. Um, it could be uh, gathering sponsors, applying for grants, etc. things like that. And here we'll assign Isaac who's now an administrator for this role. Another powerful thing that you can do is apply, uh, allow for messaging. So you might have um, secretary dot best demo at mail dot tidy hq.com. What this means is that an email can be sent to secretary dot best demo at mail dot tidy hq.com. And you can customize this last bit. So it's, looks better and specific for your role. That's one of the apps that I won't get into tonight, but we can talk about another time. But if you send an email to this particular address, it will bounce on to whoever the admin is and their personal email address. The goal of this was um, when I had multiple hats on multiple committees, I didn't want to check five different inboxes. I had enough trouble trying to keep up with my own company and personal inboxes as it was. I didn't need more volunteer inboxes to check. So the idea, and I wouldn't get that much email anyway um, as the secretary. So the goal is, is that you can have a, a permanent type email address that will automatically forward on email to whoever is in that role um, and they can handle it accordingly. Um, and as that mail's forwarded through, Tidy HQ, uh, the system's picking it up and keeping a track of it. So you've got um, a history of it all there as well. So that's what the allow for messaging or emailing um, is all about. So once we hit this save button, we've got this, we've got the secretary, uh, we might add president role, you know, look good. Um, magazines, all the things that Nat does. <laughs> make it look easy, etc. See what presidents do. 
um, we can allow for messaging here and call this president at. There we go. Oops. We'll try it with a lowercase p, shall we? Can't have capital P's in an email. So now if I print the roles, um, you can see that this is great for the AGM because you can print out all of your roles and you can see which ones are vacant and who's um, currently in that role. This would have saved me a few hours around AGM time, um, plus taking a bit of stress off my plate. Um, if I had have had this constant list of roles that was all right, always um, sort of right for the club um, and people could understand what they were getting themselves in for um, each year. So now I've set up those administrative roles. I've assigned an administrator to, to Isaac. I'm just going to tasks and just quickly show you a, a task. So on assigned, oops, if I can spell secretary, there we go. Secretary, I want to um, uh, prepare for the AGM, print out the roles ready for handing out. So this is something that happens every single year. Um, we know that it's going to repeat annually. Um, we know that it happens every year, you know, in mid-September or something along those those lines, um, start date, we'll start at this September, no end date, send a reminder three days before. Maybe we want um, somebody else to, to keep a track of this. Maybe we'll, we'll drop in that in there. Um, you can add an attachment in here as well. And if I hit save, we've got this prepare for the AGM. It happens every September. It's assigned to the secretary. If we have a, a bit of a coup and Nat says, I can be the secretary, I say, good on you, Nat. Here you go. And we save that. If I go back to the tasks, you can see that that role, uh, that task is still assigned to the role, but the reminders will now go to Nat because she's now the secretary. Um, so that's how we get this um succession plan ready to go it would have been a godsend for me to have had a list of 10 things that i knew had to be done every year as president uh, or secretary or treasurer or what have you um through this simple sort of mechanism really really powerful to set up your roles and then start assigning tasks to those roles because most organizations community organizations have a real cadence to them um that they know, you know, start of the year we have to do this, mid-year we have to do that, end of the year we have to wrap things up and prepare for the next year, bluntly speaking. Um, so you can do all those sorts of things within Tidy. makes it really, really simple. So how to get ready to go public with web, web pages and membership. Um, so Tidy automatically comes with a website, so it's free. If you want to use it, use it. If you don't want to use it and you already have a site, that's fine as well. Um, I'm not going to be too uh, upset if you choose not to use us. But it's a really nice, simple, easy to set up and maintain um, website. I was the token tech nerd at my organisation. And as soon as I left, the club didn't know how to update the website or, you know, update a little bit of copy or what have you. And... That's not normal um, for most organisations. So it's just a really easy way to have a, a public profile um, for your organisation. Most websites don't need to be too incredible for, for what we're doing for our community groups. Um, they just have to work well on mobile. They have to get someone from A to B. That is, I go to your website to understand where I, can I buy a ticket or an, a, a membership um, and then I want to get on with my day. So you can control um, some web pages uh, or the visibility of web pages to specific contact groups, which can be really powerful. You can use it as a bit of an intranet. Um, so if you've got select documents that you only want the advisory or specific coaches or specific people to have access to, you can control it that way, which can be really, really powerful as well. Like I said, the homepage is what everyone sees when you direct them to Tidy HQ. 
or your tidy HQ domain. You can use your own web domain, which I won't get into today, but that's really easy to set up as well. Um, so it's good, good idea to have it all looking tickety boo. So we'll just run into that really quick now. So first things first, under organization settings, go to web page settings and you can adjust um, the image here uh, for you. If you don't know what image you want to use, go to unsplash.com. They have all sorts of wonderful um, pictures and, and things that you, you can use for yourself. So I think we've got someone from Darwin here tonight. So you can look up Darwin. Probably going to get Charles Darwin. But anyway, we'll drop down. Oh, no, this one's a bit better than that one. Cool. So we can go back here. We'll just save it to the desktop. New image. There we go. Upload that one. You can have some social taglines. So let's. I won't use the CUNT one, um, as in CU in the Northern Territory. Uh, you can drop these sorts of things in here. Oops, we've done that bit. You can drop in a, um, some more information. This is fancy looking web page, etc. If you're more technical, you can go into the source side of things. So this is the more technical side and you can drop in your own code and, and what have you there. If you're not that way inclined, um, you can just do it this way. You can drop in different size headings. Um, maybe this is, I don't know, three, et cetera. Visible to public search engines. So you can switch this on or off. If this is off, it means that the Google bots won't. We, we basically tell the Google bots to, to go look somewhere else. If it's on, we open the doors and say, hey, Google bots, come and have a check out this website. So if eventually these little spider bots crawl over your website and that's how people find you via a Google search or, or similar. So we'll save that one. Um, oops, did I not save this? Oh, there we go. Beauty. Cool. So we've gone through web page settings, hooked that up. Contact us page. You can choose to have a contact us page or not. Totally up to you. You can display a map. The coordinates of the map will be picked off the organization details um, and the address that you drop in here. So if we call it Darwin again, Darwin, Northern Territory. I'm not sure of the postcode. Sorry. Um, we'll drop that in here. The contact us page map will just try and attempt to pull it off that address that we just dropped in there. Mailing address that's also picked off the organization details as well. Public contacts. You can drop in people's names here if you want. Um, I was the secretary until Nat replaced me. I'm not jaded about it. If you drop in an email address here and phone number, please be aware that you're going to be more susceptible to spam. Uh, we've seen quite a few organisations have that issue when they publicly um, put up email and phone numbers. There's not much we can do about it um, because that's what these people do. Uh, they send out their little spam bots and, and scrape the information from, from web pages like this. Um, so... And, but I know some organisations are, are willing to deal with that because it's paramount that they have a contact email or phone number or both um, available to the public. I'm just uh, letting you know about it. Finally, we have sponsors. So um, you can add a new sponsor here. Um, let's just do the Volkswagen. Let's just pretend Volkswagen is one of our sponsors. Beauty. We'll copy that, save you in chess. Down there. URL. I hope this is their website. Choose the file. 
open. We'll hit save here. H T T. And so you can have um, logos here as well, which is really neat. And finally, the last one, uh, let's just find another cool logo. What's a cool, cool looking logo? Here we go. We'll drop in this one. So under organization settings, logos and colors, I'll just change this logo for us as well. We might put in this one, which we just uploaded. Save that, cool. Um, and now to have a look at what your public page is looking like, if you click on the top left here, um, I would right click on public page and open link in new tab, and this will open it in a new browser tab. And now you can see what your, your web page is starting to look like. Now you can obviously tweak all of this um, to, to have it suit um, what you like. This is our, our starting point um, for it all. Next thing that we'll do is we will head to the web pages area to drop in some new things. So for example, um, I want a new page, new web page. So I'll call it um, all the cars. I'm into cars tonight for some reason. We position it under the main menu, page, contacts. Let's just look up um, Volkswagens while I'm on it. <laughs> Let's just drop in an uh, image of a Volkswagen. That looks like a good one. Uh, here is a combi. We'll drop in an image. Um, now you, you can either uh, use something that's already online. So what we could do is copy the image address here and we drop in this URL and then we can drop in, change the width of it all, those sorts of things in here. There we go, here's our combi. Um, or we can upload it from our storage area, which is another app which um, we can get into later. You can add attachments as well. So you might have an attachment, which is the uh, this image here. We'll add as an attachment. And you can also change the visibility, like we said. So you may make this uh, visible to admins only. You may have it visible to a specific group. So maybe it's everyone that starts with the letter I. Only these people can have access to this particular web page. We won't do that. Or it can be open to the general public. We want to make it published. Obviously, if you have that unchecked, it's effectively just in draft status until then. So we hit it as published and customize social sharing details. What this is, is if someone shares it to Facebook or Twitter or, or what have you, um, this is how it'll appear. So it might here, you know. Um, cool combis and maybe there's a social media image of this here that you could use. So if I save and close this, we'll have our new web page in here. What you can also do is have an external link as well. So I want to go to HTTPS abc.net.au. I'm going to call this ABC News. Um, open to the public. We're published it and we'll save and close that one in here. What we also do is collections. So these are basically like uh, sub menus. Um, so if I do a new collection and we'll call it cars, we'll hit that there. Um, and so what we can do in here, if I hit all the cars, I can now put it under the cars uh, collection uh, or sub menu in here. So save and close that. 
And so now cars is under here. Uh, we probably want to rename this to Combi. Um, rename this to Combi as well. So it doesn't get too confusing. Cool. So now I've got these things I can just drag and drop. These are called hamburger buttons, these three lines. So you can just pick and drag these around to wherever you want with it all. Um, and you can adjust this however you like um, with it all. So you can have some settings. So you can change the settings here as to the color scheme. Maybe your club is better represented by, I don't know, <laughs> pink. Broadly speaking, slightly darker colors work better um, with contrasts and, and things of that nature. Um, logo, we've already uploaded this one here, which is great. Experimental web styles. So this is just as we're launching new improvements, um, we'll let you know first um, and release those improvements to you first if you want um, with it all. Uh, Cool. So we'll just hit save on that. Now, if I come over to this other tab and hit refresh, I've now got all these new menus at the top here. Um, another cool thing that you can do is if you shrink it down, you'll see that the menu changes. So the menu will change automatically based on the size screen that's been viewed. So if it's been viewed by a uh, mobile phone or an iPad, or if there's too many menu options at the top here, it'll automatically revert to that button on the left-hand side that says menu um, with the drop-down of it all. If I go over here to the Combi site, here's my web page. Here's the attachment that I put on here um, with it. If I click ABC News, this will open up into a new tab with the um, ABC website. So you can have external links. So if you've got links out to external providers or external resources, things like that, um, you can do all that sort of stuff in here as well. So really, really powerful sort of thing to get going with your public website. Um, so next we'll get on to memberships. So obviously there's different types of memberships. Um, we set them all up using membership levels. So that's everything from life members through to social members through to your active members uh, and anything else that you, you can choose. Broadly speaking, the simpler, the better for most organisations. Each membership level can either be for an individual membership or a family membership. Obviously, family memberships are a little bit more complex and involved, which we can go through. Uh, you can set a level to expire on a particular day or be a rolling membership. So we call them either fixed membership or rolling membership. A fixed membership means that I sign up today, but it doesn't start until September 1. A rolling membership is I sign up today and it starts today and it goes for 12 months. Rolling memberships are broadly speaking way, way easier to, to handle because it's a bit like Netflix or Spotify it's the sort of expectation that most people have um, for their memberships is that I started paying today, it should start from today. With the exception being that if you've got real um, seasonal um, type operations, so sports clubs or universities, for example, where you know that every year it's going to start on the 1st of Jan and end on December 31, then it should be a fixed membership um, for those um, you are in control of the membership form. So you, like uh, I'll show you, you can have as many custom fields as you want. That's effectively your registration form. So you can ask them, are you happy to volunteer? Do you have a first aid qualification? Do you have a working with children check? Any of those sorts of questions you can add to your membership form and have them filled out as part of that process. You can also link a membership level to a group. So anyone who joins that level automatically gets added to the group or you can use smart groups as well um, where you can just have advanced filters um, set up so we can get smart with uh, tagging contacts that fulfill that member or membership criteria with it all. So if I switch on over... Um, 
back to membership. So first things first, we've got to go to apps. Under apps, you'll see a bunch of different um, additions to the platform that you can choose to use or, or not use. Totally up to you. Memberships is one. Shop. You can use a custom web domain if you want. Uh, custom mail domain. So you can have president at myclub.com.au. Um, you can run events through us as well. So a bit like Eventbrite or any of those sorts of services, you can sell tickets. Meetings for meeting minutes, which I'll show you in a moment. Um, document storage for keeping your constitution and, and various images, etc., in here. Um, another main ones that, that we'll talk about. So tonight we're going to dig into memberships. So I'm going to add that up. The other one that I'd like to switch on is meetings because we'll go into that one as well. So we'll add those two. And on the left-hand side here now, you can see that there's meetings and memberships. So let's crack on over to memberships. So first things first, like I said, if you want to accept any payments through the platform, you need to switch on Stripe um, under the payment settings, which we showed you earlier. So in here, either create an account, which is free, takes about four or five minutes to set up, and then connect it, connect Tidy with Stripe, and then we've got our payment gateway set up. Until that time, any membership that you put up with a dollar value won't be seen um, because there's no way to accept a payment for it. So let's set up a membership level. So membership level is obviously the membership level. Uh, membership is someone that you want to be a member of a membership level. And bulk importing from group is when you want to bulk import a, a number of contacts um, into a specific membership level. So membership level, let's start there. So we have a membership level. We're going to call it the active members with it all description. So this is where you should be writing the value that people are getting out of it, um, you know, by becoming a member, you get discounted obstacles and a or something to that effect. Now, you can use a cover image. Um, so if you want to make this look a little bit more fancy, um, let's get a new image in here. Let's stick with the Darwin theme, shall we? Uh, that looks pretty typical. Come on. Pull out the croc. Come in here. Textures. Uh, cool, that sounds even better. So this is where we get to the pricing part. So we've got two types, like I mentioned, we've got fixed and rolling. Rolling just starts, means it starts from today and it might go for 12 months. Nice and easy, a bit like... Netflix, Spotify, et cetera. Fixed is, it goes for 12 months, but it always starts on the 1st of July um, for everyone. Member price can be whatever it is that you want it to be. Um, like I said, I'll keep this $0 because I don't have Stripe hooked up to this account. Once you've got Stripe hooked up, you can put whatever number you want in here. Finance category, so we'll automatically um drop the money or allocate the, the, the money to this finance category. We'll do that for membership. Auto renew. So what the system can do is it can um, collect the credit card details of your member. It's all tokenized. It's all very, very secure. But every 12 months, effectively, we will ping that stored credit card and charge the individual the membership price again um, without you having to do anything. There are obviously, and I'll show you in a moment, a bunch of notifications that automatically get sent out so that you're letting Isaac know, hey, we're going to charge your credit card again because we have to do that. Um, but a really powerful feature for, for many organisations. Registration form. Uh, like I said, you can have anything in here. So maybe emergency contact details are really important for you. Uh, maybe you want to know what their occupation is. Maybe you want to know if they've got a you know, working with children check. Make it 
that's a number. We'll say that's a number, sure. Um, that's to the public. It's a single line of text. We'll hit that save there. So we set that up. We'll make that a required field. These are all required fields that could be optional. So you can set up your registration form like so. If you've got a um, waiver uh, release and indemnification, maybe you call it something else, maybe you call it terms, maybe you call it whatever you want, but you can adjust that agreement title down here. Most people, most organisations should have a waiver of some sort, even if it is, hey, we may take your photo at an event, we should be allowed to use that photo for our own good sort of stuff. Um, or it can go into any injury that happens uh, whilst riding a horse or, or whatever, whatever it is that you might do, you might want to cover your backside with a waiver. Um, there's a bunch of them that you can get online with a quick Google search. Most states or territories have um, default waiver uh, or indemnification agreements that you can copy and paste in here for associations and non-profits. Agreement exceptions text. So if you think that this is too hardcore, uh, you can make that a bit softer. Um, or if you don't have one, you can just uncheck it. Uh, you don't need to have it at all. You do have um, the ability to, obviously default waivers are only for new memberships. Once we've set up this membership, you need to adjust it within each membership level. Um, so that's where you set all that up. Member messages, so welcome messages. This is where we get these merge tags again in here. So you, you can say, hi, Isaac, welcome to membership in the best organisation in the world. You get to see crocodiles, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's a welcome message. You can put whatever you want in there. Renewal reminders, so you might want something that goes out 25 days before the membership expires. The really important thing to note here is that people only be allowed to renew their membership within this date period. So within 25 days, they'll see a renew button. Outside of that 25 days, so prior to the 25 days, they won't have a renewal button. Um, we do that so people can't renew years in advance by just clicking the button multiple times and, and things of that nature. Um, if they're really eager beavers, maybe you just set the renewal reminder to go out 30 days before the membership expires uh, or something of that nature. Um, you can edit the, the text that you want to switch out as well. Again, merge tags in here. Uh, you can tell them why it's such a great idea to, to renew your membership. Um, with this, you can see in here that we've got end dates, um, so you can customise it in here uh, so people know specifically that, hey, the active membership for the best demo club will expire on the 25th of August, etc. Renewal success, so yippee doodah. Uh, Isaac renewed for another year. That's great. This is the renewal success message that we'll send out. Expired notice. So if they failed to renew um, and just going up to the renewal reminder, you can add another one. So if you want another renewal reminder to go out 10 days before membership and another one three days before membership, you can do that. That's the max that you're allowed though, three any more than that, we think it's a bit spammy, so we limit it to three. Expired notices, so they failed to renew. Uh, you might want to say, hey, you know, you overlooked it. Are you sure you want to go? Or those sorts of things. Again, you can spend um, more expiry notices after this. Um, expired reminders, rather. You can add other reminders as well um, with it all here. So it's quite involved. Um, but it means that you can do a, a really sort of capable job in uh, exhausting and making sure that everyone knows exactly what they're missing out on or what they're getting involved in. Admin notifications. So let's just pretend that Nat, she likes to be over everything. Um, we're going to send her an email with the complete members' details every time someone... Um, 
signs up for a membership. The advantage here is if you've got specific coaches or if you've got subcommittees or maybe it's a, I don't know, specific group of members that someone's taken the lead on and they want to introduce themselves personally to them or, or maybe it's for insurance purposes uh, one group uses it for. Maybe uh, you send the members' details to the insurer instantly via this sort of system. Uh, you can do that here. Access and sharing. So you can um, adjust the visibility. Admin only. The reason that you'd use admin only is, one, maybe it's in draft. Um, you don't want it to go out to the public because you're still editing it. The other reason is that it could be something like life memberships. So life memberships is something that's really powerful to track through this sort of system. You set it to a 99-year uh, term and adjust the visibility to ad admin only. So only the admins can see it, edit it, add people to it, etc. You can change the visibility to groups. That means that Isaac must be in a specific group in order to see and then um, apply to that group. Usually it's used by the, the sort of more involved groups like Rotary Clubs or someone that's a little bit more old school with the way that they want to vet people into their organisation. It is a very much a two-step process. So you need one public membership, which anyone can apply for, that puts them into a group or that you would manually drop them into a group and then you'd have this second membership level. It's, it's quite involved and uh, I'd recommend against it, um, mainly unless you really have to, mainly because most organisations are desperate for members or really want members so that we want to make it as easy as possible. So we make visible to public. So that means it goes on public today. Um, you can leave that blank. Auto add members to a group. So you can add them to a, another group called active members if we want. Um, a better way to do this is to just use a smart group and use some filters with it. Facebook pixel ID. So if you are advertising your memberships on Facebook, you can drop this pixel ID, which is a Facebook advertising thing in here so they can track the success and do what Facebook does best and stalk your potential members from the ad all the way through to a successful sign up um, of the membership. And that's how we save a membership. So if I click save now, um, we'll upload this image. Congratulations, we've created a, a membership. So this URL here is what we can share out on Facebook or wherever it is that we want to post in here. So if I just open this in a new tab, I can see this is my membership. It's for active members. Great. I can register here. Who is the membership for? Nat. I'm logged in as Nat. That's why it's coming up. Next member information. So these are all the details that I asked. So you remember the occupation wasn't a required field, so I don't have to fill that one out. Working with children, check number. Um, that's my helper text in here. Um, so I can fill all those sorts of details out. Go to the waiver. Obviously, I need to fill this out. So um, Cool. Go to the waiver. I agree. Confirm. And that's how someone purchases a membership through you. Obviously, if there's a price here, there would usually be a credit card form um, in here. You can also use OpenPay for buy now, pay later as well. So that's just one of the under organization settings and under the payment settings, there is OpenPay here. So you can really easily uh, apply for OpenPay as well. Um, and that just means that your members can buy now, pay later. Um, you get the funds up front minus the open pay fee, which is usually around 4% or so. Um, and your open pay does the chasing up of your members over several months um, with them. So that's another great system um, or, or option for your members to for convenience, really, if they want to uh, space their repayments for a membership with it all. 
So that's membership. So we've set up some automated emails that go out when the members sign up for renewals, expirations, all those sorts of things. Um, we've gone through all those bits and pieces. Uh, it takes all the manual work out of managing your memberships. All of this will automatically happen for you. So the system's doing the heavy lifting with that sort of piece. Um, and like I said, uh, you won't be able to sell any memberships without setting up a payment gateway with it all. Fiona, you have a question? Oh, hi. Um, I just wanted to ask about... Yeah, um, Talkback Radio. Uh, what happens if you've got, like, different that membership levels and different yeah. costs? Sorry, I missed that. Do you mind saying that again? All right. Um, if you've got different membership levels with different costs? Yes. Um, how do you set that up? Like, do you have to, is that where you would have to do that um, groups thing that you said was quite involved? No, if you've got different membership levels, so we just set up a diff another membership level um, at a different price. If that is that what you mean? Yeah, and so can they just pick that membership level then? Correct. So we just set up another one called the pro membership and make it $100, for example. I'll just yeah. save this now real quick. I'll skip over all this. Um, I won't be able to see it because it's, I don't have payment gateway set up. Yeah. But effectively now I've got two memberships and you're spot on. Basically your members will just pick either the, bronze, silver or gold membership level that they want and pay accordingly. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Easy. Um, so we'll move on. So it's saving time for the committee. So meetings and tasks. We've already touched on tasks, but we'll just run into it with meetings now. Um, we can have all the meetings, agendas and minutes created with Tidy HQ. It saves a huge amount of time as the secretary or minute taker, um, which being part of long committee meetings going way into Thursday evenings were the bane of my existence. So that was the real goal is to reduce the amount of time um, required to, to be the secretary. You can attach reports or any other attachments to them. You can assign a speaker to each topic, duration length for each topic, so they know how long they have to cover their agenda topic. The platform does integrate with Zoom, so you can have a meeting just like we are tonight um, by sharing your screen via Zoom and having that Zoom link going out with the agenda. And at the end of the meeting, it's just a matter of hitting save and close, sharing the minutes, and the invitees get a copy a formatted copy of their meeting minutes in their inbox straight away. Um, and from a governance point of view, your job is done. So like we did before, we switched on meetings through the apps area. If we go to meetings section now, welcome to Tidy. Let's start our first meeting, Snappy. So we'll say this is a committee meeting. Uh, Darwin something waterfront precinct there we go looks like a fancy place hot tamale that looks like a good place for a meeting choose the date it's in a couple of weeks we're going to start it at 6 p.m we hope to finish it by seven so we can install and authorize zoom so zoom again is one of the apps that we had installed um, that we can install so you need to obviously install the Zoom app to, to link that through. So monthly committee meeting to discuss all the things. Chair, the old boss, Nat, and the minute taker, Miss Lucky, Isaac. And so the agenda is open the meeting. We want to, you know, we want to talk about um, except minutes of last meeting, for example, if I can spell. Um, we want to talk about finances, of course. Maybe we want to talk about sponsors. We want to talk about events. We want to talk about donations, if I can spell again. Now, we can indent these by clicking on the three dots. So we can 
drop all these in as subtopics of the finances discussion. Then we can talk about, um, you know, upcoming events, perhaps, you know, annual dinner. And then we want to close the meeting, for example. In here, you can um, change the, the owners if you want. Um, you can change the, the type of um, agenda item it is, you know, for action, for discussion. You can drop in um, duration. You can overwrite this by typing your own if you don't like the default ones. And you can add a um, attachment as well. So we'll attach that image for us. Once we're all done, we create the meeting. Happy days. We can send invites. So we can send invites to whoever we want in here. If we had more people, they'd obviously appear in here. You need to add them as contacts first, of course. So I'm going to cancel that. Oh, we can send invites. There we go. Um, we can manage the invitees so we can say that Isaac's coming and that's decided not to come all these sorts of things in here when people get the email the invite email they can choose to reply to that and say that yes they're coming they're attending they may be attending they're not attending and the system will automatically collect that information and drop them into these areas for you so the system will do that piece for you automatically once we want to get going, we start the meeting or if we want to add additional um, information to that agenda, you can start the meeting prematurely and, and add that uh, extra detail in here. So, you know, on time with water and muffins, like all solid meetings, muffins or pizza, <laughs> one or the other, uh, next time. Um, except minutes, so maybe there was a decision. So moved was Nat, seconded was Isaac. Um, with it all, you can add the attachments, obviously. So finances, we viewed finance report. So tasks, you know, Nat to make sure. The finance for, for example, we can assign that to Nat. We can say that the due date's due in a couple of weeks. Um, and you go through your meeting. The real advantage of this is that because you can see me typing or the secretary or the minute taker typing, at the, the meeting sort of slows down to the speed of which it can be typed out at. And it means that uh generally speaking people get more finite with what they're talking about so they don't ramble and go for 30 minutes when it could have taken five um and we can also see what the agenda is so instead of talking about how great coca-cola could be as a sponsor we're getting really particular about you know what existing sponsors we're using for events or or what's happened with donations or what have you because everyone can see what's been minuted, um, there's also no real dispute or debate um, often at the end of the meeting. So when we get to closing the meeting, so Nat close the meeting with a thumb of her fist. Um, nothing to, to come out of that. We'll save and close that. And what the system will do is it'll start generating meeting minutes. So. If I hit print details, I'll show you what, what the system's doing. So it's automatically formatting the PDF, uh, which is in a ASX type standard um, meeting minute, um, collating all this information that came out of this meeting. And we've got a summary of matters arising. So any decisions uh, that came out of it, uh, any tasks that fell out of it, and a summary of attachments, which is linked through. So if I click on that, we get that, that photo again with it all. So if I hit send, um, share the minutes, I can share it to everyone that was there. I can add more people if I want to share it with them as well. And I can just hit share minutes and um, away we go with it all. So that's job done. If I head into tasks, 
I can see that Nat for, to make sure the finance report has been uploaded, et cetera, has already been added to the list. And Nat will al already have an email uh, reminding her about this task. So for me, as a president, I'd shoot from the hip to get things done. And then it would rely on me to try and remember what I asked everyone to, to get done. This way, the system's keeping track of it. And if I've invited everyone to this system, um, they can see what's due and they can see what everyone else is due, um, needs to do around the organisation. So they can see all the tasks that are happening around my, my club, my association, et cetera, and they can give a hand if, if that's what's required. So that's um, meetings in a real nutshell. So like I said, you can assign... Um, any volunteers, any tasks that they need to complete. They'll get the reminder notices in the lead up to the tasks uh, due date to keep them on track. And you can see all the tasks assigned to the whole organisation or break it just down to my tasks. Um, what I found really helpful was that it was a great way to have people that were otherwise sort of quiet in the corner of my committee stepping up and saying, hey, do you mind, like, can I give you a hand with that grant application or... Um, do you want me to go pick up the balls or, or whatever it might be that um, the organisation needed a, a hand with? So it was a nice way to sort of get everyone on the same page rather than just sort of keeping it to the four or five linchpins in the organisation that sort of knew everything that was going on. It was way easier to democratise all of that sort of information um, around the place. So... It's, it's a good way to keep track of things that only need to happen once or twice a year, um, as well as any actions that come out of your meetings. Uh, so like I just showed you, setting into task from within a meeting is really easy um, and it's a great way to keep a tab on it all because it can get out of control pretty, pretty quickly. So the dollar side of things. So I'll just touch on this really quickly and race through it. So finances and shops. So you can track income, expenses, profit, net cash position from the finances dashboard. We're a cash book accounting um, system. So we don't do things like assets and liabilities, uh, salaries, things like that. For the sort of heavier um, accounting, uh, you need the heavy accounting systems like Zero or MyOB or Quicken or, or any of those sorts of services. Um, we are hoping to release this integration with Xero. Um, it's been a long time coming um, for organisations that need that sort of level of uh, accountability with their finances. But for lo lots of organisations, that's overkill, quite frankly. And so cash book accounting with what we do is, is just fine. So you can get a breakdown of all the transactions that come through the platform um, you can manually enter deposits from other sources like cash, bank transfers, checks, et cetera. On memberships as well, you can manually uh, record memberships or members um, that are, are buying a membership as well. Um, for someone that says, I don't know how to use a computer, I don't like them, I don't own a credit card, those sorts of things, um, you can manually register all those sorts of payments as well. So you can issue invoices directly from the platform and, and track when they're paid. That, again, was another um, constant page that I'd have up as president each week was who owed us, who did we owe, um, and keep a tab on it all, uh, rather than just the treasurer knowing in their own little spreadsheet or my ob account. Um, this is a great way to democratise a bunch of those numbers so everyone can sort of see what's going on or, or what's outstanding for the organisation. You can do a budget. It's a very rudimentary, basic budget and compare it to your actual figures. Um, and you can also pull out a cash flow report. You can share it with, with the rest of the team as well in a read-only format um, as well, which is pretty powerful. The shop is another app, as you might, may have spied, that you can switch on. It works really neatly with the existing web, web pages as well. So you can sell your whatever you want really through the tidy HQ shop, be it merchandise, be it donations, be it um, all sorts of things people sell through the, the shop. Um, so you can decide what products are visible. It uses the visible to language that, that you, that we sort of spoke about with memberships and web pages works the same way. 
um, and you can show the quantity of items that um, that you, you should have in your stock room as well. So you can see um, how much is left uh, and all that sort of stuff. You can track the status of each order through the whole shipping process. So um, if you've got someone that's the merchandise manager, um, they can fulfill those orders. So for me at my, my clubs, um, an order would come through. We, it would notify Isaac that Mel just bought a large T-shirt and Isaac could mark that shipping um, or that order rather as complete, um, which is really, really neat for me um, to keep track of who's bought what and what have I, what orders have I fulfilled and what is still outstanding with it all. Um, and there's some insights function as well. So you can report on how many people have bought what or who's visiting which, which products and, and things of that nature. So um, boring but necessary bits. Organisation settings, which we went through, um, is where most of the housekeeping stuff happens, as you might have noticed. So setting the date, time, finance settings, all those sorts of things are in there, um, as well as everything else that we've already touched on. So transaction fees um, in Australia, uh, the total transaction fees, 2.75% and 50 cents. So we, uh, Tidy adds 1% on top of Stripe's fee. So if you're overseas, um, Stripe charges different rates to Australia. Um, just add 1% on top of Stripe's fee to get, get your number. It is slightly higher on the free starter plan. So there is a free starter plan that you may be um, looking at. There's a slightly higher transaction fee on that. Go to tidyhq.com slash pricing um to to get a handle on it and lastly yeah we're here to help um there are actual humans on the other side of this uh dotted around australia on the east and west coast so we've also got knowledge base articles which we're constantly updating support.tidyhq.com is where you can find all of those uh bits and pieces and you can email us at info at tidyhq.com. If you're having trouble, screenshots are helpful. There's another service called Loom, L-O-O-M.com. Loom um, allows you to record your screen and narrate it as well. Uh, Expletives welcome. Makes it more entertaining, if nothing else. Um, so, you, you, you know, a, a picture is worth a thousand words. A video is worth a lot more than that. Um, so you can also record a, a video for us as well, or you can book a time to speak to anyone on the team um, via that calendly.com slash tidy onboarding slash quick call link. That's it from me um, for the session. Uh, thank you for, for joining me this evening. Mm -hmm.